What's going on everyone? Halo here and I want to invite you guys to check out my process on how I paint weapons for my upcoming board game Oath to Embers. Now in this tutorial I am going to be using Photoshop and a Cintiq tablet, but you can feel free to use this exact technique in whatever program you're using to digitally paint. So obviously the first thing you're going to do when you're starting any painting is start off with a brand new canvas like this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make it completely gray. So why would I make my entire canvas gray? What would be the point of that? Well, that's because I said so. But the real reason why is that toning your canvas like this to an even gray helps your eyes better distinguish value and color. Now, another big thing that you're gonna do is look for reference. Now, I know that everyone tells you that looking for reference is bad and you should be able to draw everything off of your head, but I do not think that's true. Now, what I don't think is a good idea is just taking someone's work and copying it straight up. You definitely don't wanna do that. But but if you've never seen a sword before, it's really hard to draw a sword. If you've never seen a cow before, it's really hard to draw a cow. Use a reference, just use it as a springboard for your art. For this reason alone, whenever I'm doing some of my art, I like to use things like this that basically just keep the shape to a very, very bare minimum. That way there's not a lot for me to copy off of except for the shape. Now, whether or not you're using Photoshop or Procreate or any of those things, the first thing you want to do is make a new layer so that you're not drawing on the previous layer. This is very important. Now, if I'm trying to draw a sword, the very first thing I'm going to want to do is just give myself a big basic shape of what I think a sword would look like. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It can just be something very simple. Remember, you're just trying to focus on the shape. Now, what I tend to do is I try to draw and erase and draw and erase until I pretty much have the shape down. So I'll erase some of these edges out here and then I'll go back and draw some more in and then I'll erase and then I'll draw. That's pretty much how I get most of my form down. Now I know you guys have noticed the only thing I'm doing is drawing half of this sword and there's a reason for that. And that's so I can flip this bitch. Now in Photoshop or whatever program you're using, you're basically just going to grab half of the painting and delete it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to copy the same exact thing you did and you're going to flip it horizontally and match it up. That way you just saved yourself a lot, a lot of drawing time. Then we're just gonna merge those layers together so that it's one layer. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my eraser and start erasing some of these little areas here so I can make it one even piece. So now that you've gotten hold of mighty Excalibur, let's color this bad boy in. So once you've got your outline all done, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move over here to our magic wand tool and we're gonna click on just the black. And that's gonna select everything that is black, that way you don't color in outside of your outline. Then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is take a bluish gray color and then I'm just gonna start, go ahead and lightly coloring in one side of this. Now what you're watching me do here is every single time I make a new color or a new mark with my brush tool, I use the color selector tool and then I use that new color from the color selection tool to make another color. Now in Photoshop, that's done by holding Alt. So while I have my brush tool active, you're gonna see me grab this dark color I made and I get to place it somewhere. And then I can grab one of these lighter tones or these tones here and I can place it over here. This is a really, really quick way to be able to just grab back and forth between colors that you've used. Uh, it kind of makes the whole painting process a lot faster. Now what you're gonna watch here is just a sped up version of me constantly going back and forth between color selection and placement and color selection and placement. Now one of my favorite things to use up here is in the blend modes and this we're gonna go to screen. Now what screen mode is gonna do is it's gonna take all of your colors and make them closer towards white. Instead of just placing white over everything, it actually takes every layer into consideration. Now if I just painted as normal and I took a soft brush and we went over top of everything with a lighter tone, mm -hmm. this is what it would do. Mm -hmm. You see how all of that detail I put mm -hmm. in there is now gone. But when I change it to screen mode, it takes into consideration every other one of my layers underneath it so that they don't go away. This is a really cool way to make a nice sheen and shine without having to overpower all of your layers underneath it. So now that the blade is done, it's time to start working on the hilt. Now, so that I can make sure that all I'm working on is the hilt, I wanna start deselecting everywhere where the blade is. In Photoshop, you can use the marquee tool to come over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold Alt. Now, holding Alt, as you can see on my screen, is going to change whether or not I'm adding a selection or subtracting a selection. Now, because I want to subtract the blade from my selection, I'm gonna be holding Alt, and I'm just going to make a marquee shape that is going to get rid of where the blade is on my selection. 
This way, while I'm painting, I can maintain my focus just on the area I have selected. As you can see, I'm touching none of the blade, and then as I go down here, I'm only touching the hilt. Now, I'd really like this hilt to look like it's kind of made out of gold, so basically what I'm gonna be doing is just finding roughly the color tone that I want to use for my middle tone and I'm just going to be putting in shapes back and forth just to kind of figure out how do I want this piece to stand out a little bit. Now you notice I'm not really making a whole lot of sense here. I'm just putting colors where I think I want them. Here is a neat little trick that you can use to kind of speed up some of your process. So what I'm going to be doing is going to the lasso tool here and I'm gonna be using my pen just to lasso this part of the hilt that I would like to copy. Once I have that done, I'm going to copy and paste this here. So now what I've got is a layer that just has this piece here in it, so I can move it pretty freely. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm gonna place it right over here so I don't have to repaint all of this. Now obviously what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take my eraser tool and erase some of the first shape that I made in here. It's better to use a softer brush when you're erasing these pieces. Now with everything selected here, I do remember that I want this side of the sword to be lighter than the right hand side of the sword. So I'm gonna grab one of these darker tones that I've got here. And I'm gonna just push that over top of that very slightly with a soft brush. That way this left hand side of the sword and the right hand side of the sword kind of look a little bit different. Now with the handle piece, what I'm gonna do with just a soft brush is we're just gonna kind of push in just a little bit of this dark color here. And then with one of my regular brushes, I can just now go back and forth to make it look like it's kind of wrapped. So what we're gonna do is just go here and give a little bit of the impression. And all I did was color select my darker color and we're just gonna go back and forth with one of these darker colors. Now, all I'm gonna be doing in this area is basically just go from dark to light, dark to light with my color selector and fill in all the spaces that I feel need to be filled. Now, one thing that's important to know about using the selection tool is that when you zoom in here, you're gonna get all these grainy and gritty areas here. One thing I like to do at the very end of my painting process is I like to fill those in with another color. Now sometimes I'll use like a blue or I'll use a brown or just something that I think can help accent the piece out a little bit. It doesn't really matter which color you use as long as it's not the same color as everything else. Now I'm still not technically at the end here because the coolest thing about Photoshop is I can manipulate the shapes and what I wanna do is I wanna explore is this really the end result that I want or can I change a couple things? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go to my lasso tool and I'm just going to lasso out just the hilt part here. I think that's the part I wanna play around with the most. So I make sure I just select that and then I can now go to transform and I can warp it. So a neat thing about this is I can play around and change the way that I feel like this shape should look to kind of fit the piece I want. You know, I can pull this whole piece in, I can pull it out. I feel like flaring it in a little bit on these edges would give it just a little bit more of that dimension I really wanted. So what you guys are gonna notice here is that I'm basically doing the same exact thing over and over again with all of these weapons. And sometimes just so I can have a consistent shape that I can play around with, I'll actually copy and paste one of the swords that I've already done and I'll make the entire thing black. And then once I've done that, I'll play around with the shapes until I find a shape that I like and then I'll just start painting right over it. This is really helpful because instead of trying to make a brand new shape from scratch, I can just take one of the shapes I already have and then manipulate it to my liking. And now as you can see here, I've done this method over and over and over again until I basically have five, six, seven swords, all starting with a basic shape. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video watching how I paint. And just remember, there is no wrong way to paint. This is just the way I enjoy my process. Now, if you like videos like this and there's other things that you wanna see me paint, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you guys enjoy what you watched and you wanted to support this channel, make sure that you like and subscribe. And if you just have a friend who you know loves to draw and loves to paint, hopefully this video can help them too. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching.